Mark Tadiha, put that back right now. You just leave that there. <laughs> The Yanomama Indians of southern Venezuela and northern Brazil are one of the few remaining relatively large and unacculturated Indian tribes in South America. Although they had sporadic contacts with several of the early explorers of northern South America, only in the past 18 years have some of their villages begun to establish permanent relations with mission posts. They are spread over an area of approximately 300 by 200 miles. Although, of course, no exact census has ever been taken, they are estimated to number about 10,000 persons, distributed amongst some 100 to 125 villages. In 1964, they were selected as an excellent group for a team effort to understand the social and biological structure of primitive man. We have now made five expeditions to the Yanomami. The program involves close cooperation with Dr. Miguel Le Ries and Dr. Tulio Arons of the Venezuelan Institute of Scientific Investigations. The Institute provides a pleasant and efficient base of operations in Venezuela. This film attempts to describe the Yanomama and the kinds of studies in progress. Thanks to the Venezuelan Air Force, the first leg of an expedition from Caracas to the airstrip at Esmeralda is by air. The last several hundred miles of the flight are over dense tropical rainforest. Most of this country is only now being mapped properly. <laughs> Now and then we see Yanomama villages, separated from one another by from one half to three days walk. Occasionally we also see signs of the preparation of a new garden by the slash and burn technique. The airfield at Esmeralda is a piece of natural flat savanna which readily accommodates the C-123. From Esmeralda, we travel on the Orinoco, even this high on its course, still an impressive river. Two days of river travel have brought us to the Salesian mission at Platanal, the highest mission outpost on the Orinoco River. Here at Platanal, we have overnighted and are now preparing to depart for the village of Patanoateti, in the very heartland of the tribe and the principal objective of this year's work. Although primitive man has been studied in many ways by representatives of many disciplines, the picture which has emerged of any one group has often been a mosaic of unrelatable findings. Currently, there is great interest in a more unified team approach, which places representatives of diverse disciplines in close working contacts both in the field and back in the university. This year's team consists of an ethnologist, two genetics,